The Autism Research Institute relies on the generosity of donors like you to make this webcast possible. If you enjoy this presentation, please consider making a donation. Thank you. Now, before we get started, I'll introduce our speaker. Dr. R.T. Nahr is an assistant professor in the Departments of Psychology and Neurology at Loma Linda University in California. Her research has been supported by grants awarded by Autism Speaks, the Autism Science Foundation, and the National Institute of Mental Health. Her current research interests are in the neural basis of social cognition, deficits in adolescents with ASD, and early onset psychosis. She is specifically interested in applying multimodal neuroimaging techniques to examine changes in neural architecture affected by targeted interventions in these populations. You can type your questions into the questions section now and throughout the talk. And now I will turn it over to the presenter. Thank you, Denise, and thank you everyone for uh, logging in today for this webinar. I am going to be talking today about the ins and outs of dating as it specifically applies to um, individuals with autism spectrum disorder. And I'll mostly be focusing on skills developed by the UCLA Peers Program, which is a uh, broad sort of social cognition, uh, social skills intervention. So just to give you a bit of background, the Peers Program is, um, been running for about 16 years here at UCLA and um, it was developed in 2004 for adolescents um, in, uh, initially with autism spectrum disorder but has expanded over the years to uh, preschoolers, uh, young adults and then also um, other neurodevelopmental populations like ADHD and um, social anxiety and such. The dating skills that I'm going to be talking about today are mostly from the young adult program, um, but they are in research phases of developing sort of a more elaborate dating program for individuals with ASD. So the interesting thing about this program is um, just kind of the format that it follows. Um, most of our patients with ASD tend to have difficulties with social skills because these are you know, not very intuitive to them um, like it is for uh, the rest of us. So what we do is we follow a small group format, about 10 or 12 adolescents or young adults in each group. There is a didactic instruction piece and you'll see that from some of the lessons that I'm going to go through today. The lessons are very structured. There's concrete steps and rules about different social behaviors like dating, uh, that are meant to be ecologically valid, so applicable to, you know, everyday life, sort of. And um, there is this big component of parent or caregiver assistance. So parents or a caregiver um, comes along with the um, adolescent or young adult and learns how to be a social coach. So that really helps with maintenance of treatment gain, gains over time. You know, after the 16 week program or so that they do, they are able to um, continue being coached at home by sort of an adult family member. Okay. Uh, the program uses a lot of role playing and modeling. And you'll see, I have a bunch of videos today to show you. So you'll see how the role playing or modeling is um, done as part of this program. Um, and then we ask our teens or young adults these perspective taking questions about the role play that they just observed. And that helps with um, improving their theory of mind and understanding what it is like to be in the other person's shoe in that social situation. We then have the teens rehearse all the skills that they are learning because essentially practice makes perfect, you know. This is something that they haven't necessarily been practicing or the, they're, they're following different rules or steps of these social behaviors. So practice is really key. We have them practice in the, tre in the uh, therapy session with the coach, uh, with the um, treatment providers, and then they're given performance on their uh, performance feedback. And then there is homework assignments every week that the social coaches help them with at home which then helps generalize these skills to other social settings. Okay, so moving on to dating, the first thing we wanna to talk to our 
young adults, especially about um, dating is that, you know, is choosing appropriate people to date, right? So dating is a choice. We don't get to date everyone that we might want to date. And uh, just in that same vein, everyone doesn't get to date as a, either. So there are good choices and there are bad choices when it comes to dating. A lot of these skills that I'm going to go through, you know, it might seem very intuitive to someone that doesn't have um, ASD and you might find yourself nodding along with the steps, but this is why we need to kind of explicitly state them out to our individuals with ASD, okay? So generally people want to date someone that they actually like, that might actually seem interested in them. Um, maybe you have some common interests because that's sort of what you can bond over. Those are the activities that you can do together. Um, generally, especially for our teens and young adults, they're, you know, they're dating someone around the same age. And you also sort of have a gen sense of, you know, if they are going to say yes to you, if you ask them out on a date. Conversely, we definitely don't want to be dating people that don't seem interested in us or ignore us, don't really know us. Um, maybe they're mean to us or make fun of us or, you know, there's kind of like taking advantage of you for money or for rides or whatever else. Um, we also want to steer our um, young adults with ASD from from people who may have already rejected you before. So you don't want to persistently ask the same person again. Um, and also someone who might already be in a relationship. Okay. So what are some of the dating sources that are common? So a lot of, um, you know, there's sort of a lot of different options here that I'm going to go into, but where do people find potential partners to date? And this is a question that really comes up. A lot of our young adults with ASD bring up to us. They don't even know where to look for potential partners to date. So this is kind of a little handy um, cheat sheet. And I believe that the handouts of this entire talk will be made available. Um, so you'll have all this information, but um, mutual friends is kind of, you know, really historically one of the better choices for meeting people, or it could be friends or family members. Um, people meet each other at parties or get togethers, social activities, sporting events, um, walking your dog in the neighborhood or at the parks, any kind of recreational activities or sports they might be involved in, um, or even community gatherings. Um, but a lot of our teens on the autism spectrum may not necessarily be doing all of this. Right. So they're not at all the parties or social activities. So that could be one avenue to meet people. But uh, definitely Internet dating is becoming really popular um, or has been popular for a long time. Um, they might be meeting, you know, potential partners at schools or um, classes that they're taking. Meetup groups is a really good option because you can narrow down by the activities that you're interested in and then potentially find people within those meetup groups that are interested in similar activities. Um, religious places, you know, if that's something that our um, ASD adults are attending, that could be a potential place to find someone that has very similar sort of uh, values and beliefs as you do. And then, of course, there's sort of, again, the variety of public places, uh, coffee shops, bars, clubs, which, you know, might not be, um, again, very much frequented by our um, um, adults with ASD, but um, some of them don't even really know that you could meet new people here. So it's a good cheat, cheat sheet to kind of expand their social circles. Okay. In terms of online dating sources, what are some appropriate online dating sites and apps is something we get asked a lot and that, um, you know, there's there's so many right now. So there's Coffee Meets Bagel, there's um, eHarmony, there's OkCupid, there's Hinge, there's Bumble. There's no shortage of online dating sites. So what we do want to steer our um, adults with ASD is from some inappropriate online dating sites. So that could be um, you know, like Ashley Madison might be a website that you might not want to go looking for your first dates or um, unfortunately, a lot of our adults with ASD also tend to look for dates on um, websites that are meant more for escort services because it looks like it could be easy through the advertising to meet someone and kind of have, a, you know, have a partner. But obviously, those are not really dating sites and they're not meant to form um, meaningful sort of um, romantic relationships. Okay. 
All right, so um, for the most common sort of way to meet friends, which is talking to mutual, uh, is through mutual friends, say our adults may be interested in a friend of a friend. So uh, these are some of the steps that we want them to follow if they're going to be talking to a mutual friend about helping set them up. So, you know, hopefully, obviously, this is a person you kind of trust, you, you're comfortable telling uh, this or giving this information to. So you tell that friend that you like the person, then you ask your friend if that person might be dating anyone. So you kind of gather some information to see, you know, if how amenable they might be to dating you at this point and then um you could get your friend's help to see if you know kind of get a feeler for if that person would go out with you and um generally you want to ask them not to say you said anything right because if you tell them that yeah yeah yeah, tell the person that i like them it might be a lot of pressure immediately so it's better to kind of just have your friend feel it out and then kind of help set something up without it being kind of this overt oh yeah that one likes you Okay, so we are going to watch a role play video here. And in this role play video, you're going to look and see what Alina is doing right in asking her friend. Oops, missed that. Uh, what is Alina doing for, uh, right in um, talk, asking her friend to find out about the dating interest that she has? Sorry, I keep losing my cursor. Hey Jordan, you know the guy Gabe, right? Yeah, I know Gabe. I just met him and I think he's really cute. Do you know if he's dating anyone? I don't think so. Do you think he might be interested in going out with me? Uh, maybe I can ask him. Yeah, will you? But don't tell my said anything. Yeah, for sure. Okay, thanks. Okay, so th those that's an example of what the role play videos or the modeling would look like in the group. And then these are the perspective taking questions we ask our ASV participants to see, you know, to help kind of improve their theory of mind. So what was that like for the other person? Did Jordan think Alina was weird or, um, you know, did she give her any kind of um, sort of awkward, negative, creepy stalker vibes or anything like that? And not really, it seemed like she was open to the idea of finding out for Alina if her mutual friend was um, interested in dating Alina or if she they were single or so. And then, you know, you want to ask them about the person's potential next behavior. So would, would she think that this mutual friend, um, like would she follow up? Would she actually tell the mutual friend if Alina is interested in him? And it kind of looked like she was open to the idea from the video. So, you know, we use these perspective taking questions to point out kind of um, affect and facial tone and you know kind of understanding if they think that person was put off by that request or not okay so that's one way to um, you know kind of express interest in another person that you might be interested in dating what about people we don't really know in real life right so that's another question we get asked a lot so how do people who don't know each other flirt in real life and there's you know a lot of ways to do this so there's just flirting with your eyes sort of maybe with a stranger at a bar or a coffee shop um compliments are always a good indication that someone likes you or you like the other person and um also maybe if you know people are asked if someone asks about your dating status that could also be an indication that you know they're trying to figure out that whether you're single or not and might potentially be interested in dating you. Okay, so we're gonna go through each of these examples. Um, we'll do like the bad role play and then the good role play and kind of see what steps we would recommend our um, individuals with ASV follow. Okay, so the first one's gonna be flirting with your eyes and we'll start out by looking at a bad example, okay? All 
All right, then we have a perspective taking questions again. So what was like, was that, what was that like for the other person? It looked like she was pretty weirded out. Um, we get, um, you know, I mean, it was awkward. And then what did she think of Gabe? Um, a lot of our, t our young adults will say that she probably thought he was a creepy stalker because he kept smiling at her, especially because, especially with her not looking interested at all. And then the next question is, would she want to talk to Gabe? And it doesn't really look likely from this example that she would want to talk to Gabe, okay? So then we go through the steps. So these are the steps we would recommend when it comes to flirting with your eyes. So obviously you make eye contact first. Um, we usually want them to follow sort of good eye contact rules. Like you're not staring at the person, you kind of you know look and look away um, and kind of repeat that. Um, Giving a slight smile is what we would recommend. We actually tell them no teeth at all because it's hard for people to kind of, you know, know how much is too much teeth or not. But generally, if you're just grinning at the other person, they might think you're sort of coming on too strong or it's a bit creepy. So just a slight smile, no teeth, okay? And then um, you look away after you do that, you make eye contact, you smile, you look away, and then you repeat that over a few times to show the person that, you know, it wasn't just like a one-time thing, you're actually interested in them. So let's watch a good role play next and see what Gabe does right this time. All right, so again, perspective taking questions after the good example. So what was like, was that like for the other person? She didn't seem to be weirded out by him this time. She was kind of responding back with smiling and looking away as well. Um, and, you know, then the next question is, what did she think of Gabe? Probably, you know, not much more than, oh, he maybe he seems interested or he's being nice, you know, rather than creepy stalker. And um, the last question, would she want to talk to Gabe? Probably, right? So far it's going fine. I think if he approached her at this point, she might actually kind of start a conversation with him. So, so those basically are our steps for, for flirting with your eyes. And then we would typically have our um, adults with ASD practice this with their social coaches before they actually kind of go out, do this out in the real world, okay? Next step is asking if they are dating someone, right? So again, we're gonna start by watching a bad example of how someone might do that and then um, kind of think through that situation. Hey, are you dating anybody? Um, excuse me? I just wanted to know if you're seeing anyone. I don't know. Like, do you have a boyfriend right now or no? Uh, yeah, I guess I am dating someone. Oh. Okay, so again, we go through that, uh, those list of perspective taking questions. So what was like that, was that like for the other person? Um, again, awkward probably, you know, she seemed a bit annoyed, she looked annoyed. Um, what did she think of Gabe? Um, Again, probably a bit creepy stalker coming on too strong, being kind of um, weird. Um, you know, he just kind of opened the sentence. There was no hi, hello, anything. It was just like, hey, are you dating someone, right? And then the last question, would she want to talk to Gabe again? She al already seemed to have, you know, kind of distanced herself from him by saying she's dating someone, so not likely. Right, so what do we have them do instead? Um, so really we want them to find a way to, um, you know, put this question in to a conversation that's already happening, right? So it shouldn't be too obvious. So, you know, you start a conversation, you're trading information, maybe you're talking about some common interests that you have. You could then ask them about social activities related to that common interest, like maybe what, you know, did you do that over the weekend or something like that. And then once that, sort of conversation is going, you casually bring in that question, oh, did you do that with your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your partner? And uh, that's 
it's a much sort of uh, less pressured way of finding out this information. Um, we usually use this term cover story. We want them to give a cover story for asking, and you'll see that term come up a lot as we go through the lessons. But um, the cover story, we always want it to be brief. So this is something we have all our um, adults practice with their social coaches is coming up with their cover story because a lot of them tend to go into these really long drawn out explanations, which seem kind of um, unnecessary and maybe even suspicious. Like if you gave a long cover story in this situation, the person would obviously figure out that, oh no, you're actually interested in me and you're kind of now getting defensive or justifying why you had to ask that. Um, and then you usually, you know, you don't want it to end there and just be awkward. So you want them to shift the conversation back to whatever they were talking about, the common interests that they were talking about, okay? So let's see how all these steps are put into action in this next role play. Hey, Lena, how are you? Hey, Gabe, I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. How was your weekend? It was great. Did you end up going to that concert you were telling me about? Yeah, I did. Well, how was it? It was so much fun. We had a great time. Oh, yeah? Did you yeah. go with uh, a boyfriend or just some friends? Oh, I just went with some friends. I don't have a boyfriend. Oh, yeah. I just thought I'd ask because a lot of my friends brought their girlfriends. Oh, yeah. Cool. Well, how did it sound? It was so great. The band was awesome. Wow, that sounds awesome. Yeah. All right, so when you think about what was that like for the other person, she seemed a lot more receptive this time because it didn't just come out of nowhere. It was worked into a conversation about maybe they both have talked before about liking concerts or certain types of um, music musicians and such. Um, what did she think of Gabe? Not much, just pleasant. You know, he's kind of asking about her weekend. I do think if she was saying that, you know, um, she specifically said, I don't have a boyfriend can be an indication that like, I'm letting you know that I'm single and available. Um, and then would she want to talk to Gabe again? It seemed like she was pretty, you know, happy and pleasant while talking to him. So yeah, likely she will. And as you can see, Gabe kind of followed all these steps in the sequence that we kind of recommended here, which is something we also have to emphasize to our um, adults, you know, that they have to follow these steps in the exact sequence that we are sort of recommending them because uh, going off script can be risky and we don't know if those kind of improv improvisations are really going to work for them or come across as um, awkward or so. Okay. All right, so then we talked about flirting with your eyes, asking if they're dating someone. Um, next is um, giving compliments. So we have some rules about giving compliments uh, in the peers program. And so we usually say when there's people that you don't know very well, like maybe you just met them, uh, the compliment should be specific. Um, you know, for example, you have a nice smile, that was really interesting, or that was a funny joke. Um, and the reason for this is if you give them a very broad general sort of compliment, they are going to pick up on that being fake because they'll be like, well, I don't, you know, you don't really know me that well. So um, that's kind of weird. <laughs> um, those kind of general compliments you only say for people that you know quite well. So you're so beautiful, you're so smart, you're so funny versus that was a funny joke or that was really interesting or you have a nice smile, okay? Um, we also have to kind of point out that we should avoid too many physical compliments because, you know, back-to-back -back physical compliments might um, come across very strong. Again, it might be off-putting. And if you are, if our uh, adults are giving physical compliments, we recommend that they should be the neck up, right? So face, hair, smile, eyes, those are the kind of compliments that should be given. All right, so we're going to first watch um, a bad example of giving compliments. So we'll watch this role play and think about what Alina is doing wrong. Hey, Gabe, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? I'm good, how was your weekend? It was really fun, actually. I went to the park and played basketball with some friends. Oh, nice. Do you guys play often? Not too often. We're all pretty busy, so mostly just on the weekends. Wow, so you're an amazing athlete. I don't know, I'm, I'm okay. All right, so what was that like for the other person? I think it was going fine till she suddenly was like, you're an amazing athlete because you play basketball occasionally on the weekends. Um, he kind of seemed a little bit like, uh, you know, 
hesitant about that. And then what did he think of Alina? I think the fear generally with this type of uh, compliment situation is that, you know, it's not genuine, right? Like how, would, why did she go from basketball to an amazing all round athlete? It just comes across as a bit um, inauthentic. And would he want to talk to Alina again? Yeah, probably. You know, that I don't think that one thing is going to like strike her down, but um, he probably might kind of remember that she's not always the most genuine. So what should we be doing instead? Hey, Gabe, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? I'm really good, how was your weekend? It was really fun, actually. I went to the park and played basketball with some friends. Oh, that's cool. Do you guys play often? Not too often. We're all pretty busy, so mostly just on the weekends. Oh, okay. So you must be a pretty good basketball player. Well, I'm okay, yeah. All right. So mainly the same conversation here, but the just the slight difference was that instead of calling him an all-around athlete, Alina just specifically complimented him about basketball, which is what he was talking about in the first place. So... Um, the con what was that like for the other person? Again, sort of less awkward, more genuine. Um, what did he think of Alina? Sweet, pleasant, genuine. Would he want to talk to Alina again? Likely. Um, she is giving him compliments, so why not? <laughs> All right. So, um, okay. So, so far we've kind of talked a little bit more about like floating skills and giving compliments and figuring out what someone's... Um, dating status might be right now. So next, we would then want to actually go and maybe ask someone on a date that we might be interested in. So um, we do get these questions a lot from adults with ASD, you know, how do, how do you know when you're ready to ask someone on a date or how can you tell if someone wants you, you to ask them on a date? So we really guide them through the same sort of floating um, skills that we went through, you know, are they kind of, uh, floating back? Are they maybe giving you compliments? Maybe they're dropping hints about being single. Um, maybe you're doing the same, you know, so then you kind of, you've, you've talked a bit, you've traded information, you've found some common interests that you could build a date around. That would probably be a good time to kind of ask someone on a date. Um, as opposed to if someone is um, a, ignoring you, not being nice to you, or, you know, they're kind of looking like they're weirded out by you, probably not the best time to ask them on a date, okay? So, um, here are the, some of the rules we recommend about asking someone on a date. So, before asking them out, we want to figure out their dating status. We kind of already went through how to do that. Um, if it's mutual friends, you know, you kind of let them know you like them, or you just ask them directly if they're dating anyone. We do the flirting, giving compliments, um, show interest in them. You want to have a few conversations about where you're trading information, finding interest, smiling when it's appropriate. Again, just kind of like not a very toothy smile, a, a slight smile. Um, and then, you know, people generally like when you're laughing at their jokes. That's also seen kind of as a sign of flirting and interest. So, um you know, again, you don't want it to be sort of a big ha-ha sort of laugh at their jokes, you know, just kind of like a courtesy laugh is what we would call them. Like, you thought that was a bit funny. Um, so these are all the kind of steps that you can use to assess their romantic interest in you. And then we do want our um, adults to really plan sort of the dating activity before asking someone out. So um, we ask them to use the five W's to to um, plan a date. So who are they going on the date with? What are they going to be doing on the date? Where are they going on the date? Uh, when time, you know, making sure you're on the same page about that. And then how, you know, the how could be how are you getting there? Um, how are you going to pay for this? You know, how long is it going to be? So we want them to plan all of these sort of uh, steps of a date before they ask someone on their, on their first date, okay? So here's, uh, we're gonna start with a bad example of asking someone on a date. So watch this video and think about what Gabe is doing wrong. Hi, do you wanna go on a date with me? Uh, no. Come on, just one day, it'll be really fun. No, I'm good. But I'm a really nice guy, can we just go on one date? No, thank you. I'm okay. Come on. 
<laughs> all right so again the perspective perspective taking questions what was that like for the other person again she seemed incredibly weirded out and creeped out by him just coming up to her and asking her on a date out of the blue um also a line that a lot of people use is like but i'm a nice guy and that like you know but then seeming annoyed about it so you know obviously the message to her is not that he's a nice guy um so what did she think of gay probably not nice um and also just kind of immature childish she kind of got really annoyed at her at the end even though he didn't really make a good attempt at asking her out and um and then would she want to talk to gabe again seemed unlikely from again her facial expressions the way she was kind of like leaning back away from him and and her uh, verbal responses also indicate that she is not interested in really talking to him him so the steps that we do on our um, adults with asd to follow is to a wait for an appropriate time to ask you don't just come up you know out of the blue and ask someone on a date again probably best to build it into a conversation you trade information about things that you might be interested in doing together bring that up um ask them maybe what they're doing at a certain time like the weekend you know that's a kind of a very easy non threatening type of situation everyone sort of asks each other what they're doing on the weekend so this is you know again um very laid back sort of way to figure that out um assess their interests see if they are you know again kind of like smiling um uh, flirting with their eyes or so when they are um when they are talking to you about this so are they seeming interested in maybe doing something over the weekend um you can use that common interest that you have as a cover story for going out so like if you know they were interested in going to a concert in general that could be a good um venue for their first date um then you want to obviously make sure you have the person's contact information uh to follow up with them and 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 convey that you will follow up with them um to plan out the date and that buys you more time too you don't have to like give them the whole plan for the date right there and then you can have a couple of days to kind of really think figure out and then get back to them um on the details of the date okay So let's watch a good role player and see what Gabe does right this time. Hey, Lena, how are you? Hi, hey, Gabe. I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. What'd you do this weekend? I just went to see a movie with some friends. Oh, was it a sci-fi movie? I remember you telling me you really like sci-fi movies. Yes, it was a sci-fi movie. Did you hear about that new one coming out this weekend? Of course, I totally want to see that. Me too. It sounds like it's going to be really, really good. Yeah, that's what I heard. Well, what are you up to this weekend? I'm um, nothing. Would you maybe want to go see the movie with me? Yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. Well, can I get your contact information so we can plan it out? Sure, of course. It's five 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 one three one three. All right, great. I'll give you a text this weekend. We'll okay. plan it out. That sounds great. Awesome. All right. So, what was that like for the other person this time? It seemed like it went fine. You know, he worked it into the conversation. Bought up. Uh, a uh, common interest before he kind of asked her about maybe wanting to do something together around that interest um what did she think of gabe she seemed interested right in the way she said like she was pretty available over the weekend to do something um and uh, she gave him his her number so that's also a um, sign that she is interested in gabe and would want to talk to gabe again okay All right so sometimes though you know the person you ask out even if you assess the interest and you felt like oh you know i think she that person might be into me um it doesn't always work out you know sometimes you re- may not be reading the situation accurately maybe they're just being friendly or just being nice and you know that can be um taken uh, incorrectly and this happens to everyone so i think it's again good to make sure that our um adults with asd are um ready to handle situations where they might be rejected or when they have to reject someone too so we're going to go through both sets of examples okay so let's first watch a bad example of accepting a rejection uh, once you ask someone on a date sorry so oh. Hi, do you want to go on a date with me? No. 
Please, it'll be really fun. Come on, just one day. Uh, no, I'm okay. If you don't like the day, we don't have to go on anymore. Just one day, please. No, I don't want to go out with you. But why? I'm a really nice guy. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> why, though? I Just why? I just don't want to go out with you. I'm sorry. You're not sorry. You're just stuck up. All right, so that clearly didn't go really well. A, you know, what was that like for the other person? She said no multiple times, no means no. He didn't seem to really be um, accepting of that and kept pushing her. Uh, what did she think of Gabe? I mean, again, kind of a bit, we get a lot of creepy stalker for this situation as well. He just was coming on too strong. And and then at the end got really upset with her and called her uptight. <laughs> so would she want to talk to Gabe again? Not likely after that encounter. Okay, so let's see what would be a better way to accept rejection. So the main thing is really keeping your cool, try not to get upset about it right there and then. Um, you know, again, just kind of emphasizing that this is normal. This happens to like a lot of people who when they ask other people out, um it's part of the dating experience um once they say no you can make a casual statement of acceptance you really don't want to push the person on this you say okay that's fine okay no worries you can shift the subject back to the common interest so that you're not just standing there being awkward or that you know it kind of just becomes this awkward silence um and then we want them to use you don't want to just stand there and talk about your common interest for like hours after that. You just want to talk about it for a little longer and then use a cover story before exiting. Again, the cover story should be short and simple. You don't have to go into big details because then it just seems like it's an excuse and you're being um, defensive or something. Okay. So just keeping it friendly, not pressuring them to go out. And you should also, I think, just impolite to uh, press someone to give you an explanation. They really don't have to give you an explanation if they don't want to go out with you, okay? So let's watch the good role play and see what Gabe does right this time. Hey, Lena, how are you? Hey, Gabe, I'm good, how are you? Pretty good, what you do this weekend? I just went to see a movie with some friends. Oh, fun, was it a sci-fi movie? I know you love sci-fi movies. It was definitely a sci-fi movie, yes. Are you going to see that new one coming out this weekend? I really want to see that. I heard it's really good. I heard it's going to be really good yeah. too. Well, what are you doing this weekend? Um, I'm not really sure yet. Would you maybe want to go see the movie with me? Oh, well, thanks for asking, but I'm actually kind of seeing someone right now. I understand. I just thought I'd ask. Well, you should definitely check out that movie. I heard the special effects are going to be amazing. I definitely want to check it out. All right. Well, I got this class. I'll see you later. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye. All right, so seemed like a much better situation this time. She didn't think Gabe came across as weird, or awkward, or anything. And would she talk to Gabe again? Probably, yeah. She'd be friendly with him. Um, you know, he kind of took that very well. Um, Gabe himself did follow all the steps. He didn't get upset. Um, he accepted her, um, you know, her no pretty immediately. Uh, brought it back to the movie they were talking about and then just give a very quick cover story to kind of exit the situation, okay? So in the similar way, and when you're turning someone else down, let's start by watching a bad example of how you might do that. Hi, do you wanna go out with me? Are you kidding me? No way. Come on, just one day, it'll be really fun. What, are you out of your mind? No. Why don't you want to go out with me? I would never go out with you. I can't wait to tell all my friends that you asked me that. I just thought it'd be kind of fun. Uh, no, not in a million years. Okay. Okay, so what was that like for Gabe this time? He, I mean, that was kind of mean and rude, right? And, uh, she kind of was making fun of him and laughing at him and saying she would tell her friends. So he's going to think that she's mean and rude and, He's probably not going to want to talk to Alina again after this. So the steps that we really want our adults with ASC to follow for turning someone down, again, just keep your cool, be polite when you're turning them down, um, give us cover story for turning them down. We don't want them to lie uh, about their cover story though. We don't want to tell, you know, them to say like, um, maybe they're dating someone when they're not because you can get caught in those lies pretty quickly. So just, you know, um, just a brief cover story for turning them down. Thank them for asking you out. 
shift the subject back to a common interest and then use a cover story yourself this time before exiting okay so again just keep it friendly uh, don't say yes just because you don't know how to say no that's a big one um, practicing these skills will help you learn how to say no if you really don't want to go out with someone uh, but yeah you should definitely not be saying yes because you feel sorry for the person or something like that uh, don't make fun of them don't laugh at them and you shouldn't really be telling others and spreading the word that they asked you out okay so let's watch this um, good example to see how alina handles it this time hey alina how are you hey gay i'm good how are you pretty good what did you do this weekend i just went to see a movie with some friends sounds fun was it a sci-fi movie Yes, it was definitely a sci-fi movie. I know, I know you love sci-fi movies. Yeah. Well, are you going to see that new one coming out this weekend? I really want to see that. I heard it's really good. I heard it's going to be good, too. Yeah. Well, um, what are you doing this weekend? I'm uh, not really sure. Would you maybe want to go see the movie with me? Oh, I'm actually kind of seeing someone right now, but thank you so much for asking. I understand. I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, but anyway, you should definitely see that movie. I heard the special effects are going to be really good. I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah. Well, I gotta get going. I have class right now. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll see you in a minute. I'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. So that definitely went much more smoothly. He didn't think she was mean or making fun of him this time. And would he maybe talk to her again, even though she kind of turned it down? Probably likely as a friend. You know, they it all seemed to go pretty well. It wasn't too awkward. So uh, he might. Yeah. All right, so now, um, you know, say you've asked someone out and they've said yes, and you're supposed to follow up with them about um, setting up a date, right? So you've gotten their number, maybe you've gotten their social media handle, whatever electronic form of communication you're using. Um, you know, these are some rules that we have our adults with ASD follow because they also struggle with electronic communication. So. You always want to identify yourself and you're contacting someone new. You use a cover story for contacting someone you don't contact regularly. So, you know, like, hey, remember we talked about going on that movie. So I was just texting you to kind of start planning it out. Um, would be, you know, just give them the context, right? Um, we always recommend don't call or text before or after double digits, okay? Um, don't get too personal just as a general rule of thumb you, you want to post or text or leave voicemails that anyone can see read or hear what you uh, send so that's you know you just want to make sure you're not it's not inappropriate anyway or private or too personal for example um we have them use a two message rule so if you message someone a couple of times and they haven't responded then you just kind of let it be because they might not be interested in responding back to you uh, you want to you don't want to bombard their like inboxes and things with multiple messages so just two messages if they haven't responded um that's about it okay um avoid cold calling so that would be like getting the mutual friend's number without your mutual friend telling them <laughs> that you like them and then just calling them out of the blue to set up a date so avoid cold calling that doesn't really work very well for most people um just give as much as you get in general you know if someone just kind of gauge the frequency of the other person's electronic communication and kind of build how much you're texting or calling based on of that using emojis is a great way to convey tone again especially for our um, adults with asd you know it's like kind of a healthy hand, handful tool so to kind of convey to the other person when you're being kind of uh, funny or um, sarcastic or something like that um but also you know you want to make sure they're not using excessive emojis because that can be annoying or like inappropriate ones like the eggplant one probably not great to put on your initial electronic communications with someone new okay all right so um we've already kind of talked about some of the rules for planning and prepping for a date we follow the five w's you followed up with them using the two-day rule so within the two days that you got their contact information and ask them on a date you want to go on that date with them um preparing for the date so just making sure you know your space is presentable uh putting away things making sure you're following good hygiene 
dressing appropriately for the activity, feeling, trying to look like you made some effort always is a good indication to the other person that you're interested. And this is true of even virtual dates. So a lot of people are doing virtual dates right now because of the lockdown. And just because you're doing a virtual date with someone doesn't mean, you know, you can't wear nice clothes or have your place look like a mess behind you. You should be mindful of all these things, even on a virtual date like that. Okay. So then we're talking about beginning. We're going to talk about beginning a date and ending a date. Um, so let's look at a bad example first for beginning a date. Hey, Lena. Hey. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Pretty good. We said seven, right? I got the time right? Oh, yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Well, should I come in or do you want to go? Oh, we could just go. Okay. All right, so what did she do wrong this time? I mean, mainly she kind of just blocked the door on him and then was just answering his questions. It was a bit awkward for him. So um, not a great way to begin a date overall. Um, so really we want, you know, our teens to make sure that they're greeting their date. If it's a, if they've come to pick them up, that you invite them in, introduce them to anyone they don't know around, maybe offer them some refreshments politely and then kind of start talking about the plans for your date. So let's watch this next role play to see Alina doing it right this time. Hey Gabe, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, come on in. Oh, thanks. So I don't think you've met my roommate before. No, that's Jordan. Jordan, hey. this is Gabe. And I don't think you've been to my house, so no, let me give you a little tour. So the, the living room's right over here, and the kitchen's that way. Do nice. you want anything to eat or drink? Oh, no, thanks. Okay, cool. Well, I don't remember what time our reservations were, but do you want to hang out for a bit or get going? Maybe we should get going. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Awesome. Okay. After you. Thank you. All right, so definitely went much better this time. You know, she kind of followed all these steps, and it was a good way to kind of get started on the right foot for their date and uh, Gabe seemed more receptive to her uh, this time around um, for the beginning of a good date okay so um, we do have a lot of rules about date about you know being on the date I'm going to kind of skim through some of these in the interest of time but they will be on the handout um, but you know just kind of some of the main things is um, Avoiding risky topics like politics or going to a protest or something as a place for your first date, you know, because you just never know what the other person's beliefs might be. It might not be the best situation to go with that. Another important thing is just going with the flow. Um, you know, you may have a very well planned out date, but uh, your date might not want to do those things and might have other suggestions. So you kind of just go with the flow of that. But always remember that dating is a choice if it's happening happening with this one person consistently you do have the choice of maybe kind of reevaluating if you want to continue dating that person okay. um you know obviously be nice to your date don't ignore them don't flirt with other people when you're on the date don't be on your phone while you're on the date um if you are expecting an important text or call let them know in advance and apologize um so they kind of have a sense and you're not just like texting on your friend group chat or something um and then one important thing is keep it short and sweet at first. You know, a lot of our teens or young adults feel pressure to build this really elaborate date and a long all day date. And they may have never even gone on a date yet. And so just keep it short and simple and then build up. So maybe do like a two hour coffee date or a, um, or like a small museum date or something like that before building it into like a long all day sort of event. Um, Making conversations on dates. So, you know, obviously you want to mainly make sure it's a two sided conversation. You're asking questions. They are giving you asking questions. You're giving up um, information about 50 50 and you're not kind of hogging the conversation or being too personal or policing them about their grammar, for example, at first. Um, 
you also don't want to get into arguments with them you know you want to make sure you're using good body boundaries uh, volume eye contact and like i said the trade of information should feel pretty 50 50 during the date um we want to make sure our teens are staying safe on their date so they you know you might want to google your date before you meet them that's pretty normal these days everyone does that um you might want to drive yourself to and from the date if you're not comfortable having that person come to your house. Um, you could meet your date in a public place. Um, maybe not a good idea to go somewhere alone with your date at first um, or bring them home. You know, just the, these are all the rules maybe that, you know, our teens should or young adults should be advised by their social coaches on just making sure they know how to stay safe on dates. Um, there is this thing if you're at a bar, it's called an angel shot. If you indicate to the bartender that you want an angel shot, it's actually um, kind of like a SOS for help. Like if you're feeling unsafe on your date or you need to be escorted to your Uber or to your car, um, you can tell your young adults that they should ask the bartender for an angel shot, probably discreetly so that their date doesn't really kind of get clued into that. Okay. Um, an awkward question we get often in the last few minutes I just want to touch on is paying on a date. So who should pay for the date? How do you determine um, who should pay on the date or should the same person pay every time? And people just have different beliefs about this. You know, some people feel like it should just be the person who um, asks you out on the date or sometimes people feel like it should be the guy who pays for the date all the time. So that's, you know, people's personal belief. But here's sort of what we would recommend. Um, in terms of dating is um, you should always be prepared to pay. It's always nice for the person who asked for the date should pay, should pay for that date. But the person who was asked on the date should always offer to pay and be prepared to pay or to split the bill. So we have them use the two offer rule. So, you know, you start by offering to pay once if you're the person who was asked out on the date. So can I get this? Can I help with that? Do you want to split it? If they say no, you offer for a second time by saying, are you sure? If they say no again, then you just thank them. Okay, so let's watch this role play to see what um, Alina is doing right in handling that. So that was a really nice dinner. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, I'm glad we came. Me too. It's a good restaurant. It is. I'll take that when you're ready. Thanks. Can I help you with that? No, not at all. Are you sure? Yeah, it's my pleasure. Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah. I'll get I'll get it next time. That's good. All right, so that went pretty smoothly. She followed the steps, she offered twice, but she didn't try to push it. It was nice of her to say though that, you know, I'll get it next time. So it kind of feels more equitable. Uh, would he want to go out with Alina again? Seemed like it, um, you know, she was nice and polite towards that end. Um, so just to end sort of, let's talk about um, ending a date. Um, and yours again, we're gonna start with a bad example. So that was a really nice lunch. I'm glad we came here. I really like this restaurant. Well, have a good day. Thanks. Well, again, thanks for coming to lunch with me. I'm glad I can treat you. Okay. All right, so overall, that was just kind of very abrupt, right? She wasn't saying anything. She just left without saying goodbye. It may seem like she came across as being kind of intentionally rude, but honestly, a lot of our adults with ASD just don't know how to end dates often. So it just becomes very awkward and you don't know what to do. So you might just make missteps in doing that, okay? So really, we want them to kind of follow the steps, which is wait for a pause in the date, have a cover story for ending the date, Thank the other person, you know, tell them if you had a good time, if you did, that is. Um, start walking them out. If you like them, you might suggest going out again. If they say yes, then you tell them you'll follow up or when you'll follow up. You, We always, always want our uh, adults to ask for permission for any physical contact. You know, what's the worst that could happen? The person will say no. It's better than kind of doing it or misreading the situation and doing it and then just putting that person off sort of maybe forever okay and then obviously you always want to say goodbye to end it 
So um, let's watch the good role play and see what Alina does right this time. Well, that was a really nice lunch. Yeah, that was really good. Thank you so much for taking me out. Oh, it was my pleasure. I had a really nice time. Yeah, so did I. Well, it's getting kind of late and I actually have to run. I have classes up right now. Oh. Yeah. Well, we should definitely do this again sometime. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. What do you have to do this weekend? Nothing, actually. I'll oh. text you tomorrow. We can figure it out. All right, sounds good. Okay, cool. Do you want me to walk through class? Oh, thanks for asking. It's actually right around the corner. Oh, okay. Well, can I give you a hug? Yeah, back? of course. Well, I'll see you later. Yeah, see you. Bye. All right. So Alina pretty much followed all the steps. She even gave a cover story of uh, having class, asked for permission about for a hug, you know, and he was very receptive to that. Um, you know, does it look likely that they might go out on a date again? I think so. It looked like it went well and they made plans for meeting up again. All right, so after the date, you always want to follow up, um, you know, same kind of rules as electronic communication. Um, but and we we want them to be honest. So if you have a connection, you kind of follow up by phone. If you don't want to go out with them, just be honest and kind and say you seem very nice, but I didn't really feel a connection. That's good enough to kind of, you know, rather than stringing someone along or ghosting them or uh, zombieing them or something like that. Um, again, not going to go through this in much detail as we are running out of time, but the, these are again some of the just safety rules to follow uh, do's and don'ts in a relationship. Uh, but we're going to end with um, just these last examples of handling dating pressure from a partner. So we'll start with a bad example. So that was a great movie. Yeah, it was really good. Well, it's um, getting pretty late. Would you maybe want to spend the night? Are you asking me to stay over? Like, you want me to sleep here? We've only been dating for two months. Well, no, I just thought you might be tired. It's pretty late. I just want to let you know it was an option. I'm just trying to be nice. Oh, my God. I can't believe you would actually ask me that. I'm leaving. All right. So maybe she overreacted a bit or, like, got too upset by that. It didn't seem like he was massively pressuring her to stay. Uh, at this point but you know either way like would he want to go out with Alina again or probably not out after that situation so these are some steps we would want them to follow for handling dating pressure from a partner so just keep your cool tell them that you don't want to do something you can use statements like I'm not comfortable with or I'm not ready to or you give a cover story like I like to take things slow or I have a late you know I'm going to have an early morning is another good cover story um, focus on I statements. So it's like, I think I need more time. Or I think I've, I'm not feeling comfortable right now. Then you sort of change the subject um, for a bit. Give a cover story and leave, especially if you're still feeling pressured. Just give a cover story and leave. And remember that dating is a choice. You shouldn't have to feel pressured from your partner to doing something that you are not comfortable with. So let's watch this last role play on how to handle dating, ple uh, dating pressure um appropriately so that was a great movie yeah that was really good well it's getting pretty late would you maybe want to spend the night oh thanks but i'm not really comfortable spending the night quite yet i totally get it i'm stuck in coffee yeah i just want to take things slow and i feel like i need a little more time to get to know you better that makes sense but that was such a great movie you could pick yeah i thought you might like it yeah. All right, so even though that can usually be an incredibly awkward situation, I think both Alina and Gabe handled it very well by following these steps. And it didn't look like that was going to be the end of that relationship. They would still go out and, you know, that they would kind of be open and communicative with each other about what they feel comfortable with. All right, so that was sort of the, um, you know, the main dating skills we focus on. This is the large peer team that goes into development of a program like this. Um, this is a link here for all of the role play video libraries. So they're free, there's dating videos, there's all kinds of other social communication uh, videos that you can access for free on this website and kind of guide your young adults with ASD through. And then just some more information about the peers program here. Not sure if I have a lot of time for questions. I know I took up the whole hour. If you've got time for a couple, I can read you some from the uh, from the list I've got. 
sure, we can do that. And then also feel free to email me with any questions and I can respond. Via okay, email. great. Well, one question that we had was just, so in same sex couples, so if you, you're you interested in people of the same sex, are the mm -hmm. rules pretty much the same? Does it, does it vary or are there all resources the specific to that? It's all the same. We have had same sex couples use the same, these skills successfully. Um, like I said, even if you're doing virtual dates, it's pretty much all the same. You still want to plan a virtual date beforehand. Um, so the skills are very generalizable to um, different sexual orientations and kind of platforms of dating as well. Okay, um, this person is asking you about elaborating on don't call or text before or after double digits. Mm -hmm. so, so can yeah, you give a little more info on that? Basically, don't text or call someone, someone new. We're talking about someone you're setting up a date with after um, 10 p.m. So, right, only only during what's yeah. considered sort of earlier hours. Yeah. And you probably, right. I would say, before 8, 8 a.m. in the morning would also be, you know, advisable to avoid. Okay, and so a question here about anxiety, and I think it's important for everyone to know that a lot of people have anxiety about asking people out or being asked mm -hmm. out. So mm -hmm. what about managing that, but just for yourself, some strategies or resources people could look at about right. how to self-manage that mm -hmm. particular aspect of this? Right, so I think that's where the uh, social coaching really comes in. You know, you appoint someone to be your social coach through these skills, and then you have the opportunity of practicing whatever you're going, if you're going to ask someone out, you have someone that you can practice that with, right? If it's not someone that can, um, you know, if you don't have like a friend, a trustworthy friend that you can do that with, a family member might be a good option, um, an adult family member that you feel comfortable practicing with. Um, but that essentially is why we emphasize a lot of practice of these skills, both in and in the um, therapy as well as outside of it, because really it's practice that helps reduce the anxiety over time. Sure, and someone's asking about finding a social coach in the area, and you just mentioned that even family members can help with that. Are there are there resources they can download if a family member, a mom or dad or cousin or somebody wanted to help? Can they access scripts, or should they copy the videos that you're doing online, or what are some ideas? Yeah, the, I mean, the videos are the best because you can see them go through the different steps and, you know, do it. Um, you can buy the peers manual if you're particularly interested in, you know, kind of following these steps to the T. Um, you can just get it off of Amazon. They're not very expensive. And then you can have people have like their private providers or um, their parents or adult siblings or friends kind of go through them. Some people might even hire like an aide to do that. You know, if you can do that through like regional center or so, that's another like really good resource for having a social coach. 